I'm very happy to be here. I worked together with Mario a long time ago, and I think his idea to educate the members of this industry is amazing. My specialty in the tattooing is the coloring. So I try to share my ex uh, experiences and my skills with the audience through a short video, which could describe, I think, much better this field of the tattooing than words. Of course, I narrated too, narrated the video, so I tried to ex explain what they've seen. I guess that's it. Or we know that the tattooing itself, like the tattooing progress, is beginning much earlier than when the needle touches the skin. And this time, partly because of the limited time, and also because of this subject, I don't want to detail it too much how to prepare for a design, like from the consultation with the customer, and also the reference selection, and like different ways of the creating of the design itself, like Photoshop, drawing, painting, photo shooting, whatever. Let's say at this time the design already was given, the design itself was already given, as the customer required it. And I was thinking about it a lot, what would be the best way to explain it to you how to make coloring. Like in words, it's very, very complicated. Photos are a little bit better, but if you are watching progress pictures, you still don't know the progress, or don't see the progress itself. So I decided to bring you a short video, what I did a few years ago. Exactly with this reason, like trying to explain it as good as possible, how I used to do color tattoos and what I used to recommend for those who are interested in my work, how to do it better. I don't want to say this is the only way how you can do it. Like, of course, there are several ways to reach your, reach your goals. And I also don't used to tattoo only on one way. Like, it's depending on many things, depending on the customer, depending on the request, depending on the skin, on the skin tone depending on the size of the tattoo, depending on the distance between me and my customer. Like if the customer is just coming around the corner and we have the possibility to meet every second day uh, or second week, like after the healing time, I'm going to choose a different way. Like when I'm, my customer, I'm living in Austria and my customer is coming from the other side of the world and we have maybe two days to complete a big piece or maybe he can come only two times a year. At this time, I'm going to show you a customer who was living uh, pretty close to me. So we had the uh, we had the chance to complete his tattoo during two sessions. And but while we are watching the video, I'm going to tell you also differences. The difference is how I would do it if this situation would be different. So let's start with the, this design. It's actually my paints like a still life undersea design. There are several different characters. Actually, there isn't main character. That's why I feel it more like steel, like because there isn't real subject of the design. It's just about the deep sea and some fishes, plants, animals, whatever. I choose this design uh, to explain the, uh, the coloring technique because uh, it's very, very rich in color, very rich in textures, uh, textures. So because of that, you can see layer many different ways how to how to reach your goal on the skin. So I think we can start to watch the video. I don't want to play you the first few minutes because it doesn't connect too much to our topic. But we are going to start around the fourth, fourth minute. Yeah. So here is the design itself. Uh, uh -huh, sorry. The first step is uh, the placement. 
Before the placement, you have to make the stencil. The stencil must be clearly understandable for nobody else, only for you. So do it as you can understand it the best. There are a lot of ways to do it. There are some that I don't understand at all. There are some that is totally clear for me. Choose what you like to choose the most. There is one important thing. Don't forget what marks did you use when you did it because I was already also able to get lost in my own stances a few times in my life. I don't really want to talk about now machines and like different bands and different type of machines. Everybody uses what he likes the most. I use rotary since many years because of the lightness of the machine, because they are silent, it's not loud. It actually, the session itself is much more intimate and I think much like, like the louder machines are a little bit too industrial for me. So it's not really the spirit of the tattooing, or what I think about the spirit of the tattooing. OK, in the first pictures, we could see that I start in general with outlines. I say in generally because, as I told you, to you, at this time I have to complete this tattoo during two sessions. <coughs> because of that, I really want to leave the marks on the skin of the whole design. Like, I don't want to finish it at the half, and then after that, at the next session, trying to fit the rest of the stencil next to the existing part. So because of that, I start with uh, outlining and trying to mark the shape of the design on the skin. Uh, I work in generally in realistic and fantasy style, but honestly I feel my, st my style much closer to the fantasy than to the realism. But there are many other styles where you use all the time black outlines. In the fantasy in the, and in the realism, we don't use outlines, or we, if we use it, uh, them, we try to hide them in the design. For this, I like to use free liner or also free shaders. And as I told it to you, sometimes the line itself is not a line, it's just a mark on the skin, but I over tattoo during the progress later. Also, depending on the character of the design, like if I have to mark the main character, then I use liners, but if I work on the background or on the front ground, and I don't want to make it too sharp, I like to use uh, bigger shader mirrors or even magnets just for this first uh, step for the marking. And I also try to place the different characters of the design with the same color. What is this going to be at the end? Not not with, black, uh, not with black or not with gray tones. So you can see it gives a, really, a very interesting colorful map on the skin. After the few, yeah, that this is what I told you. Like uh, uh, this time, I'm using or doing this mark with a seven magnum because this part of the tattoo doesn't have to be sharp. So I want to be sure that I'm not going to leave sharp marks on the skin. It's kind of sketching. Right here I'm still doing the same. I'm trying to use a lighter uh, tone of the final color because on this way I can set up the contrast and the saturation layer. If I would use immediately dark colors, it would be very hard to cover them or turn them into lighter tone, but much easier to turn the lighter tone into the darker. Into darker. So because of that, uh, in general, generally I don't use the darkest tone, just middle tones for this part of the progress. Well, I think in this picture we can see uh, the end of this lining. Okay, a little bit about the needle, different sizes, different tips, soft edges, magnums, what I'm using. And you can see how open they are. Actually, here you can see these are my favorite. Uh, I stop this picture here for a moment if you don't mind. 
because in generally, you, uh, I mean, on the market, you can achieve liner and shader needles. I have to tell you, since 20 years or 15 years, I don't buy shader needles at all. I don't really like them because I can't perfectly control them. I don't know what is your experience, but you know the difference between the shader and liner needle, as I know, is that point. If you are talking about the shader, the shader they are soldering the needle maybe until here. But I really like it if it's this point is closer to the top because the rest of the needle is much more rigid. So while I'm working, I can control the movement of the needle perfectly. The, uh, but if I'm using a shader needle, they have some nature and free movement. What I can't control, so sometimes I'm running out of the surface or from the, of the, uh, from the border of the surface, so I don't really like it. So because of that, in general, I prepare a liner needle and I just open it up with a lighter. Heat it up, open it up. And sometimes when I really need really wide brushes, I also make it wider, I open it up like with a blade. And it results an open needle like this, like the needles are in this position. I really like this. It's not really good for lining, but for coloring it's perfect because you can see that the gaps between the needles are huge. It means this area is including a lot of pigment. And you can just put this big, uh, a big amount of pigment straight to the skin. Any other needle has, without it, you don't have this possibility with any other needles. Only with this open mode. I'm very sad about it because it's not on the market, it's not available on the market, so every time when I start to work, I have to prepare this needle for myself. But I use this every time, every day, for every tattoo. How do you open it? This opening, not, not just opening, but open it up even with a blade. Yeah. Every time, like it's part of the preparation. I know it's much easier now, just a second. It's much easier nowadays, that like when I started to tattoo, I had to make my own needles. If I really hated something in this profession, it was this, really it was like, Every weekend, with the open it, the even with the Cheyenne, I open it because I think it's very complicated to uh, make this kind of needles in an industry. Like uh, it's complicated progress. Much like yeah, I guess that's the reason why they don't produce needles like this. But despite of that, since the beginning of my career, like after the third, fourth year, I started to use this kind of needle. And I'm tattooing now 23 years ago. Every day. Before every work, I prepare this needle for myself because it results insanely saturated skin. Okay. Um, how long do you usually keep a needle in the lighter? And then do you use the lighter and the needle both together for the bigger spreads that you're talking about? Uh, repeat it, please. Um, the lighter, whenever you say. Can I go? Lighter. lighter. Oh, yeah, I have to be very, very careful with this because, you know, like the first thing is that I'm melting. Solder. The solder with the bottom of the flame yeah. because it's always cooler. Okay. So you don't have to rush. You know, if you touch it with the top, it's just popping up or opening up immediately. And you know you can destroy the structure of the needle because you know it's very fine. It's steel. If you heat it up, it's like the structure is changing. It won't be that spiky anymore, and it won't work that good on the skin. So because of that, use the bottom of the light, and you have to wash it. You have to be careful. Like when you see that it's open, just move it away immediately. Don't hit, don't overheat it, because it can destroy the needle. Yeah. Okay. Do you separate your knives with razor? Do you go? And Thanks, my guy. I don't need to do this anymore because the magnets are pretty good. Like even with the chain, you know, I work uh, together with the chain company since it was established. And you know they are coming from an uh, other industry, uh, from the permanent makeup. So at the beginning they didn't really have clue about needles and stuff like that. But the way as they are working is very good because they are working together with the uh, uh, artists, with the Chilean artists. So every time if they want to create something, the first thing is they do it and then they send it out to their artists. They give back opinion and also offer better solutions, they summarize everything, and then they just bring it to the market after that. Which is, I guess, pretty good day. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't use the microphone, but I really hope you heard me. <laughs> yeah, here you can see the stroke, and even the speed of the needle. Like, nowadays, I really like to use, ah, and don't forget to use this here. <laughs> 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 so, 
So after the lining, I start the coloring. What you can see there is probably one of the worst techniques what you ever have seen. But despite of that, I really like to start like this. It's a fast running, big magnum, and I'm doing some kind of underpainting. Very roughly, I pay attention only for the placement, not really about the uh, saturating of the skin, but I want to do it like this because in general I use several layers. A healthy skin let me use like three, four layers. Like I can overwork the same uh, surface at the same time, three, at the same session three or four times. The first layer is just a very light, very uh, quick layer, like an underpainting. I'm trying to at first open up the skin and placing just the basic tone, what is the main color of this area. It has two reasons. At first, since few years there are pretty, uh, there are, uh, pretty good uh, anesthetic stuffs on the market. But for uh, most of them, is working only if the skin is already open. So after the first layer, I used to start to use these products. My favorite right now is the H2Ocean. Nothing. This, this is a foam soap. I clean the tattoo with this during the whole session, but it's including lidocaine. And I can tell you, it's like my, my own experience that it's making the pro progress much more painless. And on this way, you don't burn out your customer that much. And also, you can make better job because the customer is not moving. So you can, you can lead your hand much safer and much more precious. So while I'm doing this first layer, you can see I leave a lot of uh, places open. I want to do it like this because later, maybe at first, at, at first I place the darker, uh, I place the pigment on the darker surfaces. I'm trying to leave open the skin for the lighter colors. And also trying to leave a lot of gap because I want to fulfill the skin with pigment just with the later layers. And I want to get fully saturated uh, surface after the third or fourth. You can see after the first color later, I'm trying to set up the contrast with black. It's a very similar way like when you are doing, uh, or when I'm doing black and gray tattoos. And actually, at this part of the progress, I don't really have exact plan. Like, I'm just trying to place the shadows and leave open the lights, but I'm kind of drawing, painting, trying to follow the design. Because it's not a portrait, it's, I don't think I have to copy exactly the prepared design. I used to make several smaller changes during the pro progress if I feel it if I feel it that I can result better tattoo than my original Photoshop plan was. You could see I also, well, you can see I also changed the needle. I started with a big 13 or 17 magnum, but here I'm using a smaller one, probably a seven magnum, because I also want to get more into the details. The first stage of the coloring, my machine was running pretty fast. Don't ask me how fast because it's depending a lot on the skin. I also I, I don't even have screen on my uh, power supply because I wanna keep my mind open and free. Like I have to tell you, in the first 15, 20 minutes, every time, every day when I start with tattoo, I'm trying to experience the skin. I'm trying how is this reacting for a faster machine for the slower machine, I'm checking out all of my needles, watching the reaction of the skin, and this is the point, like, uh, 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 during the preparation, I used to prepare a three liner, five liner, seven liner, three shader, five shader, seven shader, uh, I mean, one shader, and then seven mag, nine mag, 13, 17 mag. So, I'm trying all of the needles, and this is the point when I figured out which ones will be the best 
uh, depending on the skill and depending on the design tool. So you can see in the next step, I start to place the lighter tones. Here I already used a round shader, getting more and more into the details. Also you need to know if I'm uh, with bigger needles I'm running my machines faster, but if I'm working smaller uh, while I'm working smaller needles, I'm slowing down my machines. It has actually one very simple and understandable reason because with small needles in general I'm doing I used to do details, small details and if the machine is too fast, I have to move my hand also very fast. But on this way, I can't really control uh, the result. Like maybe I, I'm running out of the running out of the surface. But if the machine is slow, I can totally control the machine and the needle, and I can get the result what I wanted to get wanted to, wanted to get at the beginning. In general, I'm trying to complete a surface, but the size of the sur surface that I'm working on is like I'm trying to complete during one hour. I complete this part of the tattoo, and then I'm moving further because of the uh, uh, moving further to the next one. The only reason is because I'm using those uh, numbing and anesthetic stuff, and the effect of uh, those products is in my opinion, it's good for like for an hour, for one and a half hour after that the skin can get used to it and it's not it doesn't numb the skin anymore. So I try to complete each surface during one, one and a half hour and then when it's completed I'm moving further to the next one. As you can see on this picture too, like this part that I was working before, it's already done totally done, and then I'm moving further to the next one. The next one is one of the main character of the whole design, the clownfish. The corals, what I finished before, are in the background. Over there, I didn't use too wide range of the blue tones. I didn't use dark black, uh, the darkest tones, and I also didn't use the bright whites because I didn't want to get too big contrast over there because those colors are placed in the background of the design. But as I'm working on the clownfish, I'm going to do the much bigger contrast because I want to lead the attention of the viewer to this part. Okay, about the coloring. There are several different ways how you can blend the colors into the skin. One of them is, like I told you, one of them is this layering. And from the lighter tones or from the middle tones, I'm turning the design or the surface to lighter or darker. But what we are seeing now, you can see that I started with this brown tone and I mixed together the brown with the yellow in the cartridge. And that's how I try to make this color blending on the skin. So it's, it's, also, it's another way. Uh, it can result better healing because on this way I touch the surface only one time. So actually there is only one layer. I think uh, I don't have to explain you the length of the stroke because you can see it. I say I just back to the needles again. It's a seven liner, seven shader, five liner, five shader. I think I use the needles uh, for the detailing at this stage of the progress.
But you can see I used both techniques like the layering and in the and the cartridge in the cartridge blending also in this surface because after the first layer I started to work on the details. I placed the scales on the on the torso of the fish and As you see, I didn't leave uh, too many open surfaces for the light, uh, for the whites, because on those spots I didn't want to get bright light. I just wanted to get a lighter, uh, lighter tone of the yellows. Here I'm doing the same with the blue color, color, uh, colors. Actually, in this case, my tattoo technique is pretty monotone because uh, I'm doing the same progress from uh, surface to surface. I really have to focus on the design, so I, that's why, so because, okay, I have to start to explain somewhere else. Because at the same time, I focus only on one part of the design, and I don't look at the whole design. I need to have a pretty well prepared plan. And while I'm working on the different sections of the tattoo, I have to follow the instructions of the print. Actually, I'm going to check out the connection between the different sections just at the very end, at the last stage, the stage of the tattoo, uh, the tattoo session, when I'm setting up the saturation and also the contrast in one step. As I see it here, actually we are already at the second session of this tattoo progress. And I'm sure a smaller video is going to come here because I slow down my machine. So we can see that the surface what I tattooed last time is already healed. And I don't think I have to explain it like the picture, every picture explains more about the progress, but I could tell you with words. Okay, yes. Yeah. You can clearly see what's going on. You could see that I started with the middle, middle tones, placed the li uh, lighter colors, now I placed the white, which is actually not white because I didn't leave gaps in the skin. I just want to turn the yellow and the green tones a little bit lighter. I'm just trying to make the view more exciting, uh, much more rich in tones and looking more realistic. Actually what is what makes difference between, for example, a realistic tattoo or a new school tattoo, in my opinion, is exactly that, the richness of the details and the richness of the tones. Okay, in the last picture you could see how long stroke I use for coloring. But I have to tell you, like, let's say in general, it's really depending a lot on the skin. If the skin is young and healthy, then even shorter uh, stroke is enough and also uh, slower speed. But when I work on an older customer, when the skin is not that flexible anymore, not that like more uh, drier than very often I have to use longer strokes and also speeder machines. 
But I can't tell you that it's a rule like if, if, if the skin is older or drier, then you have to run your machines faster. That's what I told you, like every time in the first 15 minutes, I'm trying to learn how to work on the skin. Because sometimes when I slow down the machine, I get much more saturated uh, result than with a fast machine. I seriously can't tell you why, what is the reason, because logically it should be the opposite. But despite of that, happens what happens. So there are no rules. Like we also have to keep our mind flexible and we have to be open because that's why the tattooing is my favorite art form because it's so so living. You know, the canvas, the material itself is living and it's reacting always different. Like the canvas is always canvas, the old paint is always paint. Like of course the trying is depending on the humidity and on the temperature, but on the skin, we can have much bigger surprises, like in the cold room. <laughs> yeah, this surface, I just wanted to uh, show it to you that yeah, it was a different way. On the other uh, clownfish, I started, on, on the torso of this clownfish, I started with the darker tones and made the like, like, uh, lighters next to it, and then I blend it together. Like, that's what I told you, like, you have to be open, and you have to be ready to change on your usual working progress if it's needed. I've seen some of my apprentices getting frightened when something didn't work as it used to work. But we have to solve the problems and then we have to be ready to change and find the right way how to make the tattoo good. Because this is the point that at the end it has to be good. And also we have to keep it in my, our mind that the tattoo has to be good for uh, good, good looking for long. So it's not enough to make a nice piece, taking a nice photo and then we, we don't work for that. We work for a lifetime. Of course every tattoo is changing with time together with the skin. But the tattoo, what we are doing, has to look as good as possible, as long as possible. So we have to watch the skin while we are working very carefully, try, trying to not overwork it. We have to result also good healing, and not only good healing, but of course, like I see here are guys from Australia, I'm sure here are guys from California, they are in very hard situation because the sunshine is so strong over here, then the lifetime of the color tattoos is, or are much shorter than for example in Scandinavia. So, but then we have to keep it in my mind, if, I'm, if I work in California, if I work with my California customers, I make much bigger, much, uh, much bigger contrast, not only in tones, but also in colors because I know that this vibration is, or can get gone, uh, gone much faster than, than in Europe. Okay, on the eye of the clownfish, we can see the progress Clearly, see the progress when I start with the dark colors, or I start with the black. In general, I do this only when I have the ready design. Like if I'm freehanding, I always start with the middle tones because after the first layers, I still have the possibility to turn any surface into darker or lighter tone. But when I have a photo, when I, when I have a ready design, I like to start with the uh, black and finish with the white. And you can you can you can be sure that like, at, at this last movement with the white. It's not going to result white after the healing. It's going to be a light blue because the, uh, because I mix the colors together. Of course, when it's fresh, it's looking much brighter. But after the healing, when the pigments are under the skin and they kind of melt together, mix together, 
I'm sure that this part is going to be a light blue. It could be bright white only if I would have done it on a clear surface where there wasn't any pigment before. But on this way, like I could try to place the different colors next to each other, but it would result little gaps between the different tones. And it would also result uh, in 20 years faded away tattoo. On this way, when I place or mix the colors in the skin with those four layers, three, four layers, or not even three, four, because here on this surface you can see there are only two layers. There was a light yellow, and then I even light, I, I lighten it more with, with the white. But it's going to result a very light yellow tone, but you can be sure that it's not going to fade away in the next 10 years, because it's, this surface is going to be so fulfilled with the pigment that it will be long lasting. Also, very interesting thing about the white, I don't know if you know it. I didn't know it for long and I didn't even understand it, but I, when I used, I used to do cover ups, I had this experience that if I mix the darker tones with some white, just like if, if I had to use la, uh, dark blue, but I mixed it even just with a few drops of white. It gave me a little bit lighter blue tone, but after the, after, after the healing, uh, it covered the surface much stronger than the dark blue. For many years I didn't understand this, because logically it's supposed to be lighter, not stronger. But the reason is, because I don't know if you recognize it already, but check it out, that a bottle of white is always much more heavier than a bottle of any other color. And the reason is that the white is big pigment. There are two big enemies of a tattoo which can fade away the tattoo. I was talking about the first one, the sunshine. The second one is our limb system. The pigments are staying in the skin which is fulfilled with water and it's streaming together with the limb system. So during the years, the limb system during the whole uh, you, you, uh, during the structure of the skin is moving away a lot of pigments. It's a fact because I had customer who had uh, surgery three months after a tattoo session and his doctors were totally surprised because they recognized that his limbs were colorful. They took them out, they made examination and the limbs were fulfilled with pigments because of the tattoo session three months earlier. So it meant three months after the session it was still streaming in the body. So as I told you, the, white pigment, the size of the white pigment is bigger. And actually, if you mix your colors with a little white, those white pigments, like a brick wall surrounding the other pigments, filling the holes of the skin texture, and doesn't let the color move away, stream away with the limbs. So it, 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 it results longer lasting pieces. Cooler. <laughs> Actually, I, right now, my favorite white is, I'm sure there are several good products on the market, but my favorite is the high white from the Intense. It's actually in the bacterial set, high white. Good for mixing, good for whitening, it's pretty good. But I'm sure there are a lot of good whites in the market, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so where we are. So you can see here I'm scaling, but I don't want to get white scales, I just want to get uh, lighter blue scales. But the, the body of this stripe is shining, then I didn't put any other colors, only the white. If you check out this part of the design, you can see that I used a lot of black and also a lot of white. This is pretty big uh, contrast uh, difference, uh, pretty big contrast volume. 
and I did this because this is one of the main character uh, uh, main characters, and I wanted to leave the attention of the viewer over here. And as I told it to you, my working progress is continuing on the very same way, on another surface. And maybe one difference, you can see that I tat uh, over tattooed this surface before only with water, because I wanted to use the anesthetics. But after that, the same progress. First, big needle, big speed, but pretty bad quality, and then smaller needle, smaller speed, filling, detailing. This section of the tattoo, I'm not really going to use small needles. I'm sure that I'm not going to use free liners because it's just kind of killing part, you know, between different characters, some kind of from ground. I don't want to make it too detailed because the richness of the de details is also very attractive view for the eyes. Very eye-catching, but I don't want to catch the eye of the viewer at this part. I would rather just surround the main characters here, kind of framing the main characters. Being honest, I did this tattoo several years ago and with the contrast volume, I guess I did a little bit too big contrast volume at this section of the tattoo. Like I shouldn't go into those deep dark grays and also shouldn't whiten the highlights. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm supposed to do this only on my main characters. Okay. Mm -hmm. But probably I was excited about the filming, so <laughs> I had to share my attention to a little bit. <laughs> no one, look, many of my customers used to say like, wow, our job and art form is very hard because we don't have chance to correct our mistakes. And I used to tell them it's not true, like, of course, we are human beings, I'm a human being too, I'm doing mistakes every day and every hour, but, yeah, we can correct them. So even if I would have the chance to overwork this part, I could lighten the darker spots and also could darken a little bit the light ones, and then it would be perfect immediately. And that's what I did. You see the same surface. At first I used the light, but as I'm watching the design, as, I'm, uh, as I build it up, I have to correct myself. So, yeah, did you see? And this early, I started with... Ah, second, please. You see, I started with the yellow, but I found it uh, way too light, so I easily could turn it to a darker tone which is matching better into the design or fitting to this part of the design. And then you see I can turn it even to darker and darker. Like it's easy, like it's like doing a cover-up. I'm just setting up the contrast of this part right now. But because it's not a main character, you see, I don't really use black. I'm just using darker color tones because I don't want to reach the biggest contrast volume. Also, like I'm just darkening 
the green with a little bit little dark blue but I still don't touch it with black at all as I'm getting closer to the end of the design I can see how the different parts are worked together how do they create the final effect of the tattoo so during the progress I can start to do those small setups in contrast and in hue, but in general I used to do just at the very, like, uh, very last uh, section. For this part of the tattoo, we, we need to know a lot about color th theories. I don't want to get into this too deep, but we, like every tattoo artist, has to learn about the primary colors, secondary colors, the complementers, the effects or uh, what we can achieve with mixing those colors, how can we warm up and how we can cool, uh, cool down different colors without getting only gray tones. But this is uh, one field of the science in my opinion like the color theories and I don't think one two or few hours would be enough to talk about even the basics of this science but you can find a lot of information about it even on the, on the internet just google color theories and this time I would like to talk more about the technical things not, not about those theories Also, a very important thing that we can try to get the perfection during the tattooing, but all we have to know that it's impossible. So actually, what is our duty that making the visual effect of the tattoo as believable as possible. And, but, but, you know, we can't build up a design from pigment to pigment. So we all the time have to cheat a little bit. That's why I don't want to recommend you making an exact copy of the reference. But I used to recommend more like getting the same effect what the reference has. Right now, like, like yeah, exactly what I did. Like I tried to warm up some surfaces, cool down some others, trying to harmonize the different uh, sections of the of the design How many hours total was this piece? Uh, I don't remember exactly but the fact that it was two sessions means like two times two times five six hours. Here we are at uh, to the last session or like last section of this design. The redness on the skin is because of the anesthetics. I broke up the skin before the coloring. I didn't want to burn out the customer. Probably here we were working around four, four and a half hours ago. So it's understandable if the customer is sensitive here. So we have to take care of him if we want to make a good job. As you see, I started the middle tones and then a little bit lighter and lighter. But at this part, or at, at this uh, stage, I use only the big, uh, big magnum, like as I see, it's a 13 magnum.
a bit of the but why I generally use clear colors and then I try to or I make them more uh, natural, more pastel, more grayish just on the next uh, in the next layers. I always focus on one area, as I told you, because of the aesthetic uh, uh, stuff, I try to complete one area, because my experience is that it's pretty uncomfortable <laughs> for the customer when I touch back to a se uh, section what I thought it would like three, four hours before. It's pretty sensitive. But this part of that, at the very last session, like if we are talking about the bigger piece, at the very last session, I have to do this because the last section is when I set up the contrast volume of the whole design. Until then, I'm trying to follow the reference picture. On the reference picture, everything is all right. That's why I like to do pretty work it out uh, references, not just a line sketch or something like this. Because I want to know what I have to interpret uh, into the skin or represent on the skin. But at the end, of course, like I make also mistakes. Maybe some parts are lighter, some parts are dark, darker, like on the original design. And also, it's depending on the uh, on the skin, on the skin tone. So sometimes I have to set this up because of the skin itself. But in generally, I try to focus. But this is just one way. There are tattoos like what I complete during one session. Of course, then I focus on the whole design all the time. But you know, if you if if, if I work on big pieces like a sleeve or arm. I should step back three, four meters just to see the whole design. So in the moment while I'm tattooing, I really focus on the part of the tattoo, what is in front of me. Which is actually pretty weird sometimes, because sometimes I just look at the board, what I'm doing, and I just don't understand it. How is this going to be good at the end, you know? Like, look at this part. like. Actually, this is a mess, but you will see at the end the whole design. It's an important part of the design. This part itself is not looking good, but as a part of the whole unit, this is an important part of the design. Okay, with this I wanted to say, like, I know uh, very good tattoo artists who are working for the perfection, and they work out every small details of the tattoo really perfectly. Technically, I respect them a lot. They are kind of insane because they are so focused. But when I step back three, four meters and I look at the design, I just can't decide which part is the important part of the design, which is the main character, which is the background, because every surface of the tattoo is the same detail, same saturated. So sometimes you have to work less to get better, better result. And yet sometimes the less is more. Yeah, the same thing is going on here. Bigger mirror, bigger speed, smaller, middle, smaller speed, from middle tone to dark, and then after the dark sessions, the light ones. Okay, this seems maybe a little bit weird, but the reason why I tried, uh, I, I over tattooed this blue surface with this, I don't know, light brown, because I'm trying to harmonize the different elements of the design. I photoshopped this design so it wasn't a photo. I put it together using four or five different kind of designs. 
those designs were in different environment, in different light, so those elements are pretty different and they don't work together. This is our du duty to turn the reference photo or the reference picture into an art piece. There are also rules how to harmonize the colors, how to harmonize the colors of the main character with the colors of the background. It would be another seminar, I think. It could be a topic of another seminar. So do I have problems with uh, like the black um, muddying up your light tones if you were dark after you've already Of course I, 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 I had like everybody had it, but I used to cream with Vaseline or with Aquatat. In the mirror I started to use the Aquatat of the of the UH lotion because it's taking away the redness too so I can see the colors clearer. Uh, when I cream the skin, so if there is the layer of the cream on the surface, it doesn't make dirty the other tones. And it's also one reason why, you know, as I told it to you, that sometimes I start with the black. Then I know the design, but I don't have to figure it out. Like when I know uh, the contrast volume of the section, then I start straight with the black. Exactly because of this. Like this dirt on the surface doesn't really matter because after the after the healing, it's not there anymore. But at the end of the session, when the tattoo is done, we have to take a picture. And it has very big importance, or we know what kind of picture we are going to get at the end. Because sometimes the color timer doesn't return anymore, you can't take a huge picture, so it's also very important keeping the surface clear until you get the photo. But sometimes I could mess it up with the white at the end. <laughs> <It's> the same. <laughs> I could tell you what I'm doing here, but I would just, just repeat myself. I just, play, I just played the highlights, but those were not white highlights because I laid them on a colored surface, so I'm just going to get lighter tone of the, the colors of the first layers. Okay, here I started to work out uh, one of the three main characters. I really like to do this part of the design because originally this element is red, reddish. But because I wanted to harmonize it with the background, you can see like I placed at first this mirror tone, this I don't know, even pinkish brownish tone, but I turned later to darker and lighter. And I also, using the rules of the color theories, for example, in a few minutes you are going to see it, that I placed the shadow with a blue, which, uh, which is going to turn kind of gray tone, creating very natural effect, and make the view very believable that it's not just a Photoshop work, but this, this star is really in this environment. No, because this color is pretty close to the skin tone. I don't know if you see it, but because it's one of the main characters, I try to keep open some surfaces for the lights, for the highlights. Which I started to here be the lighter tone of the basic color. But for example here, I don't know if you see it, but it's not white. I touched it, I dipped this white into a little blue too. So because of that, because the highlights, the uh, highlights is one kind of bluish tone, it's going to harmonize the star with the surrounding bluish colors of the colors. So 
this is the place where I told you why I'm creating the shadow with the blue. Unless I mix the blue together uh, with the color of the first layer, it's not going to be a clear blue tone. It's going to be a very natural, cold tone, bluish, co grayish, cold tone. And with a very light blue, I can place some light reflection at the bottom of the form. And for me, it made it also very believable that this star is really laying on this car. You can see I'm working on this surface also the small branch layers and liners, but because it's one of the main characters, I want to make the texture detailed. You can see that at the first session I marked the skin with the light tone of those uh, dark spots, but I can darken them now. Making the character more saturated, but more saturated, uh, making bigger contrast on the character. Okay, we are very close to the end, and I'm not sure if I have a picture about the whole design in this short movie. And if you don't, or uh, would you like to watch the few seconds? So here is the original design and mm -hmm. here. Okay. Actually that was all what I wanted to tell you at this time. If you anybody has any question, this is the time to ask me. Then I can do this very quick, very fast. There is no any pressure, like, you know, I don't want to deal with the pigment, I don't want to deal with the color or nothing, but I just want to make holes on the skin that the other thing can get in. And does that show up like a blend line? I mean, obviously, you're using a shader. Does that show up like a, like a blend line wood, or does it have to be a Yeah, it has a very similar effect, but when I, start to, when I start to color the surface, it's covering up this reddish tone. Actually, every time when you color a piece, this reddish tone is over there. Sometimes that's what makes the view of the fresh to me that rich in tone. Because you know, sometimes when the red disappears, there is a contrast between the skin and the white lines. I don't know what I wanted to say with this. Yeah, I wanted to say that you, you have to fulfill the surface. Like it's not enough just to use the contrast of the red tone of the skin. 
also do, you know you're saying with the white pigment, you mix that with the darker colors and that makes it stronger. How often do you guys do that? Listen, like I told you, very small amount of white is enough for that. Very small, like you know, like for like for one or for a, to a cup, even a water drop. Yeah. Just a little, just a little touch of the white. For example, okay, we are talking about coloring now, but I started to experiment in black and gray too many years ago, mm -hmm. and when I see, I put, you know, there is the there are the different black tones, and there is the mixing water, like the filming water, and to the filming water I put only one drop white. To the cleaning water. Right. It means that I all the time mix it with a very small amount of the white, and after the healing, it is a beautiful gray tone, but it's not the same like when you make a tattoo with gray. Right. Right. It, it turns, it, it has kind of silver effect. And as I see them after many years, it's got this brick system is working over there too. So the black and gray tattoos are also stronger and they don't fade away that much. Or that fast, like it can happen with a very light tones. Very light gray tones. Yeah. So actually, I I use this every time. I use this every time. I really would like to see my tattoos in 20 years still strong and bright. So yeah, I, I do this every time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I thank you for your question. Benjamin, <laughs> I don't think I could surprise you with anything. Working in layers? Work in layers because I'm very direct. I think I did three layers on fire through the bone. Uh, yeah. I think for me you will laugh on, but for me working on your way is very, very complicated. My mind is working on this way, it's for me easier to mix the I mix the tones <coughs> with the skin. Because maybe I'm too visual, you know, and I and I see it and I can set it up and I can change it if it's needed. But I tried your way in the last years. I made this film like a few years ago. Around this time, I didn't like to uh, mix the colors in the grip or the cat cartridge that much. But in the last two, three years, I used it. It results better healing. It results much better healing, it's true. But as I told you, but we were talking about, like, if we are talking about more session pieces, it's also easy to place the first layer at the first session, let it heal and then the other, layer, other layers layer. And actually this is what results really like perfect tattoos. Beautiful, perfect, perfect healed and perfectly saturated tattoos. So right now this is my favorite way of tattooing. But I can't use it as often as I would like because many of my customers are coming from big distance. We don't have chance to meet too often. So sometimes like they can't, we can meet maybe one or two times a year, times a year. So I don't think that they really like to live their life with it. a very hard finished looking tattoo. So because of that, I'm trying to, to finish one surface and then just connect the next surface and the next session. This part, I know it's technically this is not the best way. But there is the customer too. So it's depending on the customer too. If the customer comes back after six months and some areas are then do you go over it again? I used to, of course, of course, of course. That, that's that's why I meant that this is the this uh, this way results the best saturated so all tattoos. Over again. Not all over, not all over, but on, on those uh, uh, sections where it's needed, and then I try to work this section together with the existing parts. But being honest, if I would have the chance, there is the moment when the tattoo, when I say the tattoo is finished. I would love to ask all of my customers coming back six, eight months later for a later, later one big session when I can almost overwhelm the whole thing. Because with some cover-ups I had the chance because my customer believed that this is the best way. But you know when, when the tattoo is looking good, it's very hard to convince the customer coming back, spending seven, eight hundred other dollars <laughs> on the piece when it's, when it's looking already good and done. But I had the chance to make some experiments Ex uh, experiences with cover-ups, I could convince the customer, and the final result is really, really good. It makes the tattoo much, much more stronger.
Okay, if you want to have any more, any questions or like, thank you for coming. And we okay.